Greetings, fellow mathematicians. Here we have an example of a partial fraction decomposition question that will lead to the case of repeated linear factors. So if we get started, we'll need to fully factor the denominator first. That shouldn't be too bad. Notice every term has a factor of x in it. So we can factor x out. And the part in parentheses, we can factor that further as x plus 2 times x plus 2. Make sure you write that as x plus 2 squared. And that tells us in our denominator, we have a repeated linear factor. All right, from here, we can replace our original denominator with that and do our partial fraction decomposition. So first, replace your denominator with the fully uh, factored version. And from here, we can write down our partial fractions. Start with your first linear factor, x. You'll get a partial fraction, a over x. Go to your next linear factor, x plus 2. You'll get another partial fraction, a constant b, divided by now x plus 2. And since that factor is repeated twice, we include another partial fraction of the form another constant, c, divided by x plus 2 squared. All right, from here, to solve for the values of a, b, and c, we're going to want to try to eliminate fractions everywhere from this. We don't need the original version for the function, just the fully factored denominator version. So let me get rid of that. And to get our values for a, b, and c in a, the most easiest way possible, we're going to multiply both sides by the LCD, which is x times x plus 2 squared. On the left side, you'll be left with the numerator, 2. When you multiply that LCD to the first partial fraction, x cancels, leaving you with a times x plus 2 squared. Your next partial fraction, one factor of x plus 2 cancels, leaving you with b x times x plus 2. And now your third partial fraction, the factor x plus 2 squared cancels completely, leaving you with c times x. All right, now to solve for a, b, and c here, we're still going to use the plugging in method. And since we have three unknowns, we need to plug in three values for x. Two of them we can determine easily. This factor will become 0 when x is negative 2. And then the factors of x by themselves there, those will become 0 when x is 0. So 2 of our values will be negative 2 and 0. Now our third value of x can be anything. Could be 1, could be 5, could be 100 if you're crazy. But let's be smart about it. We want to choose x, so that way all the calculations here are as simple as possible. If I choose x as negative 1, I can make this inside become positive 1. And taking powers of 1, that's very nice. So as our third value, and again we can pick anything, but we'll choose x as negative 1. All right, let's take our time and plug those in individually. Notice your left side contains no x's, so that left side is going to be 2 all the way down. All right, and when x is negative 2, looks like here the only term that remains 
your A term, that becomes zero, the B term becomes zero. Only thing that remains is the C term. That right side looks like we should get negative 2C. And it looks like we can solve that very easily for C, divide by negative 2. And it looks like we get C as negative 1. All right, let's go ahead and plug in X as 0. Anything with the factor of X, your B and C terms, cancel. Your A term remains, but notice you have 0 plus 2 squared. So 2 squared, which is 4. Our equation is going to be 2 equals 4A. And that we can solve very easily. We can get A as 1 half. And then our last value of x we're plugging in is negative 1. Just be careful. We're going to have to plug that in everywhere. The inside here becomes positive 1. 1 squared, that's going to be 1. Left side will be 2. When x is negative 1, this term just becomes 1a, or a. Be careful with your signs. When x is negative 1, that factor of x in the middle, that gives you a factor of negative 1, and then negative 1 plus 2, positive 1. Looks like your middle term evaluates to negative b. So I'll write that as minus b. And again, just be careful with your signs. When x is negative 1, this part turns to minus c. All right, from here, we have two out of the three values, so we can plug them in. So we can plug in A as 1 half and C as negative 1. All right, if we do that, we should have an equation now only containing B, and it looks like what we get is the equation 2 equals 1 half minus B, but now plus 1. All right, and if we solve that for b, I always struggle with this in class. Um, looks like this becomes what? Uh, one and a half, three halves. Subtract the three halves to this side, two minus three halves, positive one half. But notice we're left with negative b. And that equation we can solve very easily, just multiply both sides by negative one. Looks like we get B as negative one half. All right, that completes most of the work for a partial fraction decomposition question, going through all the algebra to solve for however many unknowns you have. Now all that we need to do is integrate this, plugging our values of A, B, and C back in, we should very easily be able to integrate those three partial fractions. With the values of A, B, and C determined, we plug them back in, and then we can evaluate the three integrals. Now, two of the integrals, I think, are pretty simple. Your first, the integral of 1 over x, that'll become natural log of x. And your middle, 1 over x plus 2, that also integrates to natural log but of x plus 2. The last integral, the third, that's going to be where there's a little bit of work. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to integrate 1 over x plus 2 squared. All right. We can do that with a basic u substitution. We'll choose u as x plus 2. du, the derivative is then just 1, so du is 1 dx. Plug that in. We get 1 over u squared du. And we can even write that as a power if we use negative exponents. So we'll rewrite this as the integral 
of u to the negative second power. And if we use the power rule, add one to that exponent and then divide by the new power, we get negative. And I'll write that as one over u. u to the negative one, same thing as one over u. And back substitute your u. We get this comes out to negative one over x plus two. All right, that's the only tricky integral here. Just be careful when you plug that result back in. We just really need this part. We don't need the plus C. Be careful, there's a negative in front and there's a negative right there. So if we make use of that integral, term by term, the first one will integrate to one half natural log of X. The next term we get minus one half natural log of X plus two. And our last integral, there's a minus, but our antiderivative has a minus. So that'll change to plus one over X plus two. And don't forget your plus C. And there we have it. As you start to get into repeated linear factors and then quadratic factors, the algebra goes up a lot, but with practice and taking your time, it should be manageable. I hope you enjoyed the content. Make sure to like and subscribe.